How we going everyone? Back with Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to look at how to factorize and expand perfect squares. So this is another type of expanding binomial products, just a kind of special case. If you haven't watched my difference of two squares video, that also goes into another type of these binomial expansions. So the biggest mistake that students make here is that we've got x plus 5 all squared. The number one mistake is that students put down that this is equal to x squared plus 5 squared. Okay, it's such an easy thing to do. You see that square indice and you put it on both terms, assuming that that's correct. But we've got to really think about what is this equation actually saying? We know that something squared means that it's multiplied by itself. 3 squared is the same as 3 times 3, right? So this x plus 5 squared is saying that we have that term, x plus 5, multiplied by itself, x plus 5. So we need to work out what the answer to that is. And just a hint, it is not this original number. We're going to look at how to solve this algebraically first. So we've got x plus 5 x plus 5. If we FOIL this one out, we've got x squared plus 5x plus 5x plus 25, which is equal to x squared plus 10x plus 25. So we can see that even though it's close to our original guess, we've got this term in the middle. And we're going to see where that comes from. So when we talk about algebra, it's really hard to kind of contextualize what it actually means. But we're going to have a look at what it means in regards to area. So we know that the area of a square is its length times its length, because they're going to be the exact same. That's why we call it squared, because it's the same number multiplied by itself. So for this one, if we've got x plus 5 squared, we can think about that in terms of the area of this entire square. So the length of this is going to be x, is going to be some distance, and we're going to have 5. So that whole top length there is x plus 5. And that's going to be on both sides because we are squaring. So to find out where the area comes from in this square, we're going to add up the components of each section. So if I put in these two lines here to break this up, the area of that really big square is x multiplied by x. So this whole thing is x squared. The area over here is 5 multiplied by x. And the area down here is 5 multiplied by x as well. In this little corner, we've still got our 5 by 5. So this area is 25 units. So if we add all these areas together, we're left with x squared plus 5x plus 5x, so 10x, plus 25. And that's the same answer that we got from our algebraic FOIL. So the rule that we have to know is that if we've got a plus b, or two terms, all squared, the shortcut to getting the correct answer is this is the first term squared plus two times the multiplication of both terms, right? So for this one, 10x came from 5x multiplied by 2 plus b squared, or the last term squared. So we can see really quickly that x plus 6 all squared is going to become x squared plus not 6x, but 12x plus 36. So this little shortcut will definitely help us out down the line when we get into harder quadratics. We also know that if we expand something with a rule, we can go the other way. So this one, we've got x squared plus 14x plus 49. We know that we're looking for a number that multiplies to the last term and pluses to get the middle term. We know this is 7 and 7. 7 and 7. So we'll straight away be able to get to the answer x plus 7 x plus 7, or x plus 7 squared. So this is exactly the same as how we've been doing our, our factorizing beforehand. If anything, it's actually a little bit easier because we know straight away that there's a perfect square at the back, so we just have to check that middle number. So we're just going to see what happens when we've got a negative instead of a positive in our perfect square. 
So remember that this x minus 3 squared is equal to x minus 3 multiplied by x minus 3. And if we foil this one out, we're going to see a very similar pattern that we did in the previous example. So this one is x multiplied by x is x squared. Then we've got x multiplied by minus 3 and minus 3 multiplied by x. So we're going to have two minus 3x's in the middle there. And then finally, minus 3 times minus 3 is equal to positive 9. We collect our like terms and we've got x squared minus 6x plus 9. So this looks exactly the same as kind of what we did before, except instead of having a positive in that in between the x squared and the first x term, we've got a negative. So the rule here is going to look incredibly similar. So for any a minus b squared, our final answer is going to be the first term squared minus 2 multiplied by the, the two terms plus b squared. And the reason it is that plus at the end there, it's always a plus at the end there, is because the negative 3 multiplies with negative 3. So those two negatives cancel each other out. So we're just going to do an example just to make sure we're on top of it, but it's very similar. So for this one we've got x minus 9 all squared. So we can straight away see that this is going to be x squared minus, it's going to be 9x times by 2, so this is 18x plus 9 squared, which is 81. So if you are struggling to find that second term, please write out an extra step of working. So it's going to be that x squared again, and then we're going to have minus 2ab. So we've got the 2 out the front, multiplied by a, which is x, and then the 9. So we've got x and 9. I know that's written in a stupid way, but you can do that as the number first, and then the letter. Please do remember that this is not the minus 9, okay, because we've already got that negative in there. So just make sure that that second term is always a negative sign. And then we're going to plus the 81. 2 times 9x is our 18x, so that becomes x squared minus 18x plus 81. I hope this made sense, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Congratulations on taking some time to get better at this algebra. I know it can be a little bit difficult sometimes. If you do need some extra work, remember there are some free worksheets linked in the description below, as well as the notes that came from this video, so you don't have to pause it and scribble them down. If you do get a second, please like and subscribe to the channel, because there'll be new maths videos coming out every couple of days. Thanks so much. Have a good one.